All right. So everyone's muted, but if you need me for any reason, then you know how to find me. By <laughs> but welcome to my garden. This is the Exeter Sun Salutations. Uh, my name is Erin San. I own a small company here in Arlington, Virginia called Eat Yoga Drink. I teach yoga in non-traditional spaces when the world is open, but when the world is shut down, I teach it from my home through WebEx. And I'm so delighted that you came to the studio studio today to join us in this community where we continue to celebrate self-compassion. So today's self-compassion focus is on the idea that you are enough. You are enough. We are going, we go through life oftentimes with notions that, um, that we're not whole or that we're not complete and that we need someone or something or some ideology or some physical item to help us feel more robust and more alive and more complete. But the truth is you already are whole. You are a whole, complete, perfectly imperfect human being. And in that wholeness, you have everything you need. You have your emotions, you have your needs, you have your talents, your weaknesses, you have just everything wrapped up into one beautiful package. But the times that we feel deficient, it's often because we're measuring ourselves against the standards of the world, or we're, so we're listening to the voices from outside telling us that we're not enough, or we're listening to voices within our own head. We're inviting and welcoming these um, unpleasant negative forces that, that are trying to make us think we're anything less than whole. So today's practice is dedicated to reconnecting you to your wholeness in every sense of the word through self-compassion. And as we've been, we've been talking about self-compassion all week and we'll continue into tomorrow, remember that self-compassion is very much a way of approaching your own self-awareness and self-identification with an open heart, an open mind, a little dose of curiosity, and a whole lot of kindness. So it's treating yourself with as much love and respect and attention as you would a loved one, your best friend, your kid, your, your partner, your mom, you know, whoever it is in your life whom you show compassion to unconditionally, it is that that we're trying to invite into our own sphere of self-awareness. Okay? And self-compassion comes with, there's Kristen, Kristen Neff, I've done a lot of uh, reading of her work. She's a beautiful, wonderful human who talks a lot and uh, researches a lot. She's out of the University of Texas. She's really done most of the seminal work on self-compassion. And she says how self-compassion, there's a yin and a yang. And the yin of self-compassion is where we find the soothing and the comforting and the validating. And so a lot of these mantras that we're doing with our practice are very much the yin of self-compassion. The yang of self-compassion is that which motivates you, that which, is, which wants to protect you and provide for you and spring into action to make sure that you are well taken care of. So we all have this yin and yang energy of self-compassion and just kind of notice where you fall along the spectrum. You know, do you fall, do you tend to be more in the, the self-soothing or the self-motivating? Do you tend to be more of a, um, you know, sit around and just offer yourself gentle words of thinking? Or do you like to get up and do stuff that makes you feel compassionate towards yourself? And it, there's no right answer. It's just being self-aware, just showing up and being present for the way that you can offer yourself self-compassion. All right. So today we're going to offer it through some beautiful mantra and practice and breath and movement and hopefully you can hear the birds serenading they are very loud um we're just going to begin with a centering shape so come into a seated position we call this sukhasana because sukha means ease or effortlessness and that's exactly what we want to invite into the body as we find our space we find our presence here on the mat So root down through the sit bones. Feel really connected through your seat. And then just imagine that the energy is rising up the vertebra, lifting the spine tall so your presence can be felt. Soften the jaw, maybe the eyes close. Relax the shoulders. 
The palms can lay flat against the legs or they can turn up to receive the energy that is offered to you right now. Simply take notice of the body in this moment. Take note of the bones. Take note of the tendons and the ligaments that serve to connect bones and muscles. Notice any discernible sensation in your organs. Notice any movement or shifting within, following the track of the breath. Feel your skin. Such beautiful packaging to wrap up and protect all of your body parts. Begin to float one hand up to your heart. That gentle, loving touch, just a little bit of pressure on the heart helps to release the hormone that makes you feel soothed and safe. So know that you are present for yourself in this moment. And as you connect hand to heart, I invite you to begin to welcome this mantra into your mind. I am a whole and complete being. I am enough. I accept and love myself exactly as I am. And I'll repeat that twice more and take from it whatever serves you best whatever resonates with you, you're welcome to say it out loud in your space, really committing to it. I am a whole and complete being. I am enough. I accept and love myself just as I am. I am a whole and complete being. I am enough. I accept and love myself just as I am. Take the other hand and float it to your belly. Let's begin to cultivate breath awareness. Breathing into that intention to really give it life within. So deep in your breath. As you feel fullness enter through the breath, feel the belly expand and the chest rise. And when you're ready to let the breath go, soften through the heart and release through the belly. Let's take two shared breaths of community. 
using this to cleanse out any unpleasant thoughts, any toxic energy, just starting fresh during the practice today with an open mind, an open heart, a little bit of curiosity. So let's take a big breath in through the nose. Open the mouth, let it go. Beautiful. One more big breath in. And release. Gorgeous. Start to bring the hands together. Just pressing them in Anjali Mudra in front of the heart. Just reminding yourself to hold nothing but kind, compassionate, loving thoughts in your heart. Kind, compassionate, loving words in your mouth and in your mind. Supportive, patient, loving, kind thoughts during the practice. And if you notice that anything starts to creep up, those old stories that you've told yourself about limitations or deficiencies, just be aware of it and invite some curious, gentle attention filled with love. Take a big breath in. Let it go. Start to reach the fingertips up to the sky. Interlace the fingers, press the palms up. Open up through the heart, press the heart forward. Let the shoulders slide down and back. Big stretch into the upper spine. Take one more big breath. And then as you exhale, start to press the palms forward, round the back. Feel some space growing between your shoulder blades. Inhale, reach up, press up, open up. And exhale, round, press forward. Two more, move with your breath, articulating into the spine. Nice. Bring those hands to interlace behind your back now and draw the fist over to your right hip and take a twist to your left. Keep sitting up nice and tall, inviting length into the spine on the inhale and more space to rotate on the exhale. Beautiful. Keep the arms where they are. Bring your spine back into center and start to bring your left or your excuse me, your right ear to your right shoulder. Sink that left shoulder down low, feeling a beautiful stretch on the left side of your neck. Breathing into any tightness, any kinks. And then we come back into center, shake the hands out a little bit and find a different weaving of the hands behind the back. Nice. Bring the fist over to your left hip and start to twist to the right. One more big breath in, full breath out. As you invite the spine back to center, dip the left shoulder to the left, or the left ear to the left shoulder. Softening into the right shoulder, so you can really feel the stretch in the cervical spine. And again, when you notice parts of the body that are tight or tired, try to resist the little shoulda, coulda, woulda game, right? You're here now, so be present for what you notice and just breathe some love into it. We can't change what we did or didn't do in the past. We can only live in this moment. We'll come back into center. Take a big breath and interlace those fingers once again overhead and start to crescent over to the right side. Draw the biceps back just slightly, opening up through the rib cage. Root down through both sit bones. Nice, come back up to center and start to find your crescent over to your left. Beautiful, come back up. We're gonna roll right into hands and knees. And I love to give you a chance to just move any way the body needs it right now. So find some movement forwards and backwards. 
Maybe stirring up the hips a little bit in one direction or the other direction. Really connecting with your wholeness today and connecting with the yin and the yang of self-compassion, right? Soothing and comforting yourself when you need it and motivating yourself to go a little faster, a little harder when you want it. Take two more breaths and then we'll meet in a child's pose. Once you're in your child's pose, just notice how the hips feel. Keep walking those arms forward, rooting down through the palms. Open up, scoop out the armpits. Really lift the elbows to invite a stretch into the chest. Take a big breath in. Let a breath go. Beautiful. On the next breath, come back into your table position. Extend the right leg back behind you and start to peel the right arm up to the sky. So looking for a little supported side plank here. Get familiar with how it feels to stack the shoulders right across the collarbones. Take a big breath in. And then we're gonna bring hand and knee back down to the earth. And right away, open up to the left side. Left leg extends, left arm reaches up. Just feeling your body flourish here. Big breath in. And release back down, nice. Flex the feet, root down through the balls of the feet. Start to hover the knees and just move a little bit forwards and backwards here. Keeping the knees bent, waking up through those calves and through the core and through the joints. Feel the upper back engaged as you press the earth away. And then when you're ready, lift the hips high to the sky, melt the heels, downward facing dog. And notice here where you feel the connection to the earth. Can you feel the weight evenly distributed across those four points? And as we are, find this first inversion of the practice, do you notice the breath changing at all? Take a big breath in, let a breath go. On the next breath, look forward, step the right foot forward into a low lunge. We're gonna reach the right arm up to take a twist, and then we're gonna release the right arm down outside of the right pinky toe, lift the left arm up for a twist. Release the left arm down. We're gonna do that once more on each side, so just gently twisting through the spine, keeping the hips stable. Nice. And then step forward, forward fold. And once you arrive in your fold, you can bend the knees, you can straighten them, you can maybe move a little bit side to side. Let gravity draw you down. Let that heaviness feel really comfortable. And then we'll come back into center, halfway lift to a nice flat back. And exhale, plant the hands, step the right foot back. Drop the knee. We're gonna take a twist, left arm rises, and then release the left hand. The right arm, I can't remember, was that knee up or down before? <laughs> Maybe that knee was up. You can lift it or lower it. Let's take your little twist here. I'm getting distracted by the squirrels and the birds. I tend to get lost out in nature. This is where I belong. All right, from here, we're gonna step back into a high plank. Release the knees down, bend the elbows, lower down chaturanga. Inhales, you press the earth away, let your heart shine. Back through table, flex the feet, root down through the balls of the feet, lift the knees to hover, and once again, just move a little bit. We are waking up the joints today. On the next breath, lift the hips up high, downward facing dog. 
And each time you arrive here, you take appraisal, right? You notice how it feels to be connected and rooted and how it feels to be lifted at the same time. How does it feel to be upside down? Defying gravity. Take a big breath in. Let a big breath go. This time, left foot lead. Come into that low lunge. We did have the knee up. We're going to do that once more. Lift the left arm up. Release down. We're really practicing rotating into the spinal column here, not through the hips. So just bringing that flexibility and mobility right where we want it. Right arm up. Nice. Come back. Step forward, forward, fold. This time we're gonna rise all the way to standing. So root down, lift up. Exhale, bow back down to the earth. Halfway lift, nice flat back. Plant the hand, step the left foot back. Yogi's choice, you can have the knee up or down. <laughs> peel the right arm up for a twist. Release the hand down, peel the left arm up for a twist. Moving with that beautiful dance of breath. And then we're gonna come back to a high plank. Yogi's choice, knees up or down, chaturanga. Keeping the elbows really close to the body. Inhale, find your luscious back bend. This is the nurturing right there. Lifting back up to downward facing dog. Breathe in, breathe out. <sighs> One more inhale. Let something go. This time look to the front of the mat. Step or hop. Maybe the feet hop to the hands. Rise all the way up. Open up. Spread those arms nice and wide. Swan dive down. Let your heart lead you back into a fold. Halfway lift. Plant the hands. Step back to your high plank. Lower down chaturanga. Inhale. Scoop up. Back to downward facing dog. Urdva, sorry, that was Urdva. Mukha Svanasana. <laughs> Upward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana is downward facing dog. For all my Sanskrit levas. All right, take a big breath in. Full breath out. <sighs> this time, lift the right leg high, three legged dog. Step the right foot through. Rise to warrior one. So root down through both feet, two lanes of traffic, hips squared to the front, spine is lifted, navel's drawn in, maybe the arms rise, shoulders relax. Take a big breath in. And as you exhale, hands come down to the earth, going through your vinyasa flow. So high plank to low plank, maybe upward facing dog, lifting the thighs. Back to downward facing dog. Breathe in. Breathe out. On the next breath, left heel. Then step through, warrior one. Rooting down through the right foot. Squaring the hips, taking time to feel grounded and connected and lifted at the same time. Rooting to rise. One more big breath. And float the hands down, step back. Beautiful, high to low. Just take your time on your own journey. If something feels delicious in the body, stay there. It's that yin of self-compassion. It's taking care of yourself. Breathe in, breathe out. Can you press your chest a little bit more back toward your thighs? Feeling more extension through the spine. Beautiful. Look to the front of the mat, bend the knees, maybe walk or hop feet to hands. Toe mounds, kiss, utkatasana, chair pose. Yang of self-compassion, right? We're motivated to build some heat in the body, burning off all those unpleasant thoughts, all those lies we've told ourselves about how we're not enough. You are enough. Take a big breath in. Let something go, sink a little deeper. 
and then dive back down nice halfway lift flat back plant your hands maybe you try hopping back today coming to the balls of the feet bending the knees and just trust yourself to shoot the legs back as you land in chaturanga yes float the heart up back to downward facing dog one more round of surya b inhale right heel rises step the right foot through warrior one rounding down rising up take another breath and the hands float down as you step back to high plank chaturanga heart opener return to downward facing dog <sighs> inhale left heel rises step the left foot through root down warrior one rise warriors big breath in and release down to float into your chaturanga flow beautiful look to the front of the mat bend the knees arrive feet to hands toe mounds kiss sweep up utkatasana chair pose this is a really beautiful space in which to honor yourself because you feel your whole body you feel your wholeness here and give it breath one more big breath and fold nice work halfway lift hand to shins plant your hands take your flow and we'll meet in down dog breathe in breathe out on the next breath right heel rises three-legged step the right foot through melt your left heel down come up right away warrior two we're going to just float a little bit as you inhale float that right palm up and overhead and as you exhale float that right hand outside of the right foot so if inside is more accessible or if just hanging is more accessible that's fine as well but we're going to keep going inhale lift up float up exhale float down feel free to use blocks if you have them i didn't bring them out so i'm not I don't have them right now. <laughs> Two more breaths, listening to your body. Last big breath. Nice. All right, from right here, we're going to start to float that left hand around to frame the foot. Keep the left palm rooted. We're going to make our way into a side plank, Vashistasana. You can do it supported again by releasing your left knee, or you can just go full throttle and stack. So, you know, I love my transition of taking the hand to bind on the left toe and come around with it. And maybe you hang on to it. Maybe you put that foot right up there in the thigh for a tree leg. Maybe you lift it. Maybe you stack it. Maybe you dump it behind you. Vashistasana has so many options. So find your power here, press the earth away, lift through the hips, two more breaths, wherever you are. I see lots of variations out there. You guys look awesome. One more breath. All right, so listen up. From here, we're gonna come back up to where we were. So we're gonna start to float back and step the right foot back up between the hands. Uh-huh. And then rise up into a high crescent lunge. Bring the hands to the heart, reach the fingertips forward, start to twist. So hook your left elbow outside of the left knee. I'm sorry, left elbow outside of the right knee. And if you want, you can start to open the arms, if you want. Keep pressing back into that left heel. Feel the muscles hug to the bones. Take another big breath, always lengthening on the inhale, twisting on the exhale. And then slowly start to unwind back to your high crescent lunge. Float the hands down. Step back into high plank. Maybe you lift your right leg. 
lower down chaturanga. Inhale, float the heart open. Back to downward facing dog. Nice. Breathe in and breathe out. Ah. Releasing heat. Ah. Just letting go. Mm. On the next breath, left heel rises. Step the left foot through. Melt the right heel down. Right away, warrior two. Yeah. Adjust the footing any way you need to. Really find space in the hips. Spiraling the hips outward. Beautiful adjustments there. All right, so let's dance. Nice tall spine. So start to inhale, flip the left palm reverse. Exhale, that left hand comes to the earth, maybe outside of the left pinky. Just finding a little bit more space in the hips. Inhale, rise and reverse. And exhale to root. Do that twice more. Move with your own breath. Stay within the safe limits of your body. Always filled with love, support, curiosity. One more. Beautiful. Right here, we're going to bring that right hand down, frame the foot, make our way into Vashistasana. So root down through the right palm. Any way you'd like to transition onto the edge of that right foot, finding your side plank, maybe with a bind, maybe with a tree leg. Press the earth away. Two more big breaths. And as we float back to the front of the mat, that left foot is going to step right up between the palms. Yes. Beautiful. Rise up to high crescent lunge. Bring your palms right back to the heart, sealing that dedication to love thyself. Reach forward and twist to the left. So press that left knee into the right elbow. Maybe you begin to open the arms. One more big breath. Beautiful. Untwist, high crescent. Hands come to frame the foot. Step the left foot back. Maybe leave it lifted. Challenge yourself if you like. Find that yang of self-compassion. Lower down. And then release it for your back bend. Back to downward facing dog. Beautiful. Breathe in. Breathe out. Ah. One more inhale. Let it go. This time, inhale, left heel high. Step the left foot through. We're going to rise into a high crescent lunge. Then we're going to start to press into the left foot. Bring the right knee up towards your chest. Stork pose. So really finding the rooting and the rising here. Right, those oppositional forces that invite space into the body. A sense of stability and grounding and a space of lifting. We have roots and wings. Another big breath. And then start to press that right heel back, finding warrior three. Open the arms up nice and wide. And create a little disturbancy here, a little turbulence. See if you can keep the hips level for beginners. And then it's okay to spin them open and closed a little bit as you find some turbulence. We're just looking to welcome a sense of stability into that left leg. Remember, stability doesn't mean stillness. Stability means finding your way back to balance when you're feeling off balance. So feel all of the muscles, your wholeness, all those muscles engaging on that left side. <laughs> And then we're going to come back to warrior three. Draw the right knee up towards your chest. You should feel sufficient burn in that left side by now. Externally rotate into the right foot, right hip rather, and place the foot on the, the left leg. So tree pose. Above or below the knee. We're honoring this outside scape here. So think about being whatever kind of tree you want to be. I'm going to be a crepe myrtle because those are my favorite because they're so pretty all summer and they're 
so resistant to the heat. Drawing the navel in, lifting the crown high. Take another big breath. Beautiful. Draw your knee back up to center. Step all the way back. High crescent lunge. Float the hands down. Take a vinyasa flow or meet us right in downward facing dog. Sometime before you leave this class in the chat box, let me know what kind of tree you were today. On the next inhale, right heel rises, three-legged dog. Step the right foot through, high crescent lunge. From high crescent, start to welcome the left knee up toward your chest. Stork pose. Soft and relaxed through the shoulders. And then we're gonna find our warrior three once again. So press back with purpose and intention, feeling the muscles engage onto the bone and the hip points are, are level right across. Expand your wings and just start to invite that sense of turbulence where we really connect with our trust for self. You've got the power. Beautiful. All right, come back into center, warrior three. Draw the knee back up towards your chest. Invite that external rotation for your tree pose. So again, you're rooting your left foot onto the right leg above or below the knee. So really be, be mindful and gentle and respectful of your knee. Press your foot into the leg, leg presses right back. It's like a big kiss. Mwah. Maybe you grow your branches. Maybe you embody that same tree or maybe there's another one that you really love. Your roots represent your character. Your trunk is your the essence of, of your being, right? Your physical structure and your branches are holding on to the fruit and the flowers. That show your creativity, your gifts to the world. One more big breath. Draw your left knee back up to your chest. Step all the way back, high crescent lunge, root down, step back, high to low plank, open the heart, downward facing dog, very nice job, breathe in, breathe out, <sighs> one more breath, hmm. on the next breath, right leg rises, Step through, high crescent lunge. From high crescent, return woo, back to a little gust of wind there. <laughs> I wish I would blow over, right? Feels nice to have the wind blowing against me. Root down through the feet, coming into your warrior two. Feeling both feet rooting down, arms outstretched. Take a big breath in, reverse the warrior. And then we're going to start to make our way into our half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. So we, we started to build the foundation of the pose by aligning our shoulders, by challenging our balance. And now we get to put it all together. If you have a block, it's a great prop to use in front of your toes. If you don't, I might just use my planter here. You can use any old thing that you can access. So we're going to press into that right foot. The right hand is going to come about six inches in front of the right toes. And we're going to start to lift the left leg and now find external rotation into your left hip. So you're stacking hip upon hip, shoulder upon shoulder, ribs upon ribs, and maybe start to lift that left arm up. Your gaze can be wherever it lands. Keep that top leg really flexed. Feel the heel 
Pressing back, toes pointing forward rather than up and down. Breathe into your presence here. Thank you, planter. You've served a really nice purpose. One more big breath. And we're gonna land with as much grace as we rose, coming back into warrior two. Inhale to reverse the warrior. Exhale, cartwheel the hands to frame the foot. Feel free to take another side plank. Maybe another Vashistasana is in your, in your purview here. Yes. Celebrating all of you. You are whole, you are complete, you are enough right here. And back to high plank, lower down, chaturanga. Scoop the heart up, maybe lift the hips. Downward facing dog. Breathe in and breathe out. Letting the spirit of that mantra really float through you. And if anything disconnects you from it, come on back. It's like coming home, it's waiting for you. On the next inhale, left heel rises. Step the left foot through. Spin the heel back. Come up into your warrior two. Feel the space you've created in your hips. Flip that left palm. Reverse the warrior. Keep sinking deep into the low. Sometimes when we exalt our warrior like this, we have a tendency to whoo, straighten that front leg. That's a reverse triangle, that's a shape, and if that feels good, feel free to take it. Otherwise, we're taking reverse warrior. And then start to strengthen that neuromuscular connectivity here as you visualize cartwheeling the left hand down to the earth, preparing for your half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. So shifting the weight into the left foot, Lift the right leg, rotate that hip open. So we're just, we're not spiraling. We're spiraling more through the bottom, like of the pelvis. Think about the pelvic rim spiraling open, but the hips staying internally rotated. That makes sense. So we're not oh, splaying everything open. We're just bringing the hip joint to stack over the left hip joint, but then you wanna flex the right foot and turn the heel back, toes forward. It's a lot easier for me to cue this in a studio when I can help adjust you. You guys look awesome. <laughs> Breathe. You got it. Trust yourself. One more big breath. And gently bend into that left knee, landing softly back to warrior two. Cartwheel the hands to frame the left foot. Maybe one final Vashistasana if you want to take a side plank on your way through your vinyasa flow. Back to the flow. We'll meet in down dog. Beautiful. Breathe in. And breathe out. From here, come forward into a high plank. We're gonna lower all the way down to the earth. Just bring your arms by your side, palms face down. Notice where all the spaces of the front body connect to the earth. Let yourself surrender for a moment so you can release the tension through the legs, the hips. Feel yourself breathing into the earth. I am a whole and complete being. I am enough. I accept and love myself exactly as I am. Imagine the earth hugging you back right now saying, we accept and love you exactly as you are too, you 
perfectly imperfect human. All right, from here, we're gonna to start to take a locust. So bring the toe mounds a little closer together. Bring the forehead to the earth. And when you're ready, start to lift the head, lift the ribs, chest, arms, lift the legs. Feel the shoulders drawing back toward the back of the mat. Feel the tailbone draw down toward the pubis. Two more big breaths into the body here. One more big breath. And come on back down to surrender, bringing the other cheek to the mat. For the next one, I invite you to take a bind if you'd like, finding a way to weave the fingers together again in the back body. Maybe the arms straighten and the shoulder blades draw together. And when you're ready, slowly start to press away from the earth, once again, rocking on the hip points in the lower abdomen, squeezing the thighs to the bones. Really aware of your whole being right here. Two more big breaths. One more big breath. Release the bind, melt the whole body back to the earth. Some people like to bend the knees here and let the ankles move from side to side. So if that's good for you, go for it. We're gonna take one final back bend while we're here. You're welcome to take another version of a locust pose. If your knees are already bent, maybe draw them real close together and you're gonna find a bind on the ankles or the edges of the feet. Try to bring a little flexion to the feet to protect your ankle joints. Shoulder blades draw together, heart is wide open. And when you're ready, press the heels up to the sky and your bow pose. Make sure the breath is deep. If the breath is really shallow and labored, come out of this, do something a little more gentle. Three more breaths, wherever you are. One more big, beautiful breath. And let it all go. Oh, you are enough. We're gonna bend the elbows, bringing the hands right back under the shoulders and lift up through table position, and then round the spine into a cat pose. Bring the chin toward the chest. Puff up through the spine. Contract up through the abs. And then bring your hips right to your heels. We're gonna sit into a hero's pose or Varasana. So you're welcome to bring the heels to the edges of the hips and root the sit bones down if that's comfortable for your neck or bring a pillow or a cushion underneath your sit bones or you can sit right on your heels. And if that's not feeling good to you today, come into any comfortable seat that works for you. Bring one hand to your heart, one hand to your belly and I invite you to connect with your inner hero. And we're not talking about heroes by Hollywood standards. We're not talking about heroes by social media standards. We're talking about the hero that lives in each of you, each of us. The hero that's willing to quiet the noises of the world telling us that we need to be this or that or different in some way. And to rather rely on our inner wisdom that tells us that we are already whole. We are already complete. We are already enough.
connecting with your your inner yin of self-compassion, your inner soothing mechanisms, validating your worthiness, your presence, comforting any aching physical body parts or emotional needs, as well as the, your yang of self-compassion, which motivates you to protect and provide, to really be vulnerable out in this world and show yourself broadly and brightly. Take a few more breaths. start to come onto our hips, making our way onto our backs, taking a final shape of your choosing. I'm going to take a happy laughing baby, Ananda Balasana, with the back body rooted once again, the feet pressing up towards the sky, knees drawn into the armpits, just to roll around a little bit, comforting my back, maybe straightening the legs to get a little hamstring stretch. Just kind of reigniting that inner joy, that curiosity, kind of bring me back many, many, many moons ago to when I was a baby. Just everything was so new and fresh and exciting. My cares and worries were few and far between. All my basic needs were met. And when they weren't, I cried and I got what I needed. <laughs> All right. So wrap up whatever final pose you're taking. Draw your knees in towards your chest, giving yourself that, that love, that hug, that reassurance that you are there for yourself. You will not let yourself down. Take a big breath. And as you exhale, I invite you to melt the body into your final resting shape, enjoying the sounds of the birds and the wind. And I will wake you up with a poem by Donna Falls when the time is ready.
This is a poem by Donna Folds called Whatever Doesn't Serve. What weight can you put down right now? Willingly relinquishing the pointed quills of guilt or judgment? What burden of the heart can lift? What dark corner can be lit? The candle flickering at first and burning bright? With the next breath, let it go. That old story you've told yourself a million times. Whatever doesn't serve you on this path of truth, leave it behind. Offer this one gift, the simple sacrifice that in the giving sets you free to fully live. Notice once again your completeness. All of the organs that work so tirelessly to keep you safe and protected and alive. The blood that rushes through you, oxygenating all of your parts. The heart and the lungs, just making that system work so beautifully. Your bones that give you structure your muscles that give you strength, and the skin that wraps you up like a gift, the gift that you are. You are whole. You are complete. You are enough. Listen to no outside voices that try to tell you otherwise. Long after the practice is over, may you continue to accept and love yourself exactly as you are. Start to wake up with deeper breath and movement. Find some space in the body with a full body stretch. And then find your way to one side, relaxing for a moment where you can let all of the benefits of your practice integrate to this moment of awakening and awareness. And then slowly make your way up to a comfortable seat, pressing the palms together once again in front of your heart. It is such an honor to see all of your beautiful faces and for some of you, your beautiful initials. Thank you so much for practicing with us. Thank you so much for being present for this self-compassion journey this week. I look forward to continuing it with you again tomorrow. Namaste. And again, my name is Erin. I'd be honored if you checked out eatyogadrink.com, see if there's any merchandise. Uh, available that interests you. Um, I do have some new wine glasses that are being restocked. If you look at the wine glasses that are there now, they're 21 ounces full, and they say, let that shit go. And um, I think we all need a little bit of LTSG right now. So even if you don't drink wine, they're really fun. So I have them in two different color options. They're, the color options are not on the website right now, but they will be as soon as I pick them up tomorrow. So if you like to order them, that would be awesome. You can also email me, eatyogadrink at gmail.com or find me on social media. And I'm grateful for you. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you all. Don't forget to tell me what kind of tree you are in the comments. I like to know that kind of stuff.